part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster, and today we are talking about the animated series you've all been wanting to talk about. No, not the Timon and Pumbaa spinoff, but what if... <laughs> <laughs> aka i'll talk the, about it <laughs> what if you aka want to talk about it i'll the talk cartoon about it. one <laughs> it made uh, bugs seem delicious uh, that really did happen right there was a timon and puma spinoff yeah and it was they go to the human world remember that no thankfully no <laughs> there's an episode they go to i think hollywood or la Wow. So they were lazy. They were like, mm-hmm. let's just bring them where we are now, where we're writing yeah. the show. Um, listeners, you've heard it here first. We are joined by two fantastic guests. Uh, the first voice you heard was the Scourge of Chicago, a demon spawn. I'd say devil's daughter themselves, Brad Pike. Uh, <laughs> and former roommate. And my former roommate, Brad Pike. This is great. Literally, we're going to have a conversation that we would normally have uh, in the old, the Hazel Hut. That's what we call it, the Hazel Hut. Uh, Did we call it, it that? Maybe, maybe we didn't, but our third roommate, I <laughs> believe, did. Uh, uh, Brad Pike, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Excellent. And honestly, this podcast would be incomplete without this fantastic comic actress. She is the star of stage and behind the stage. Uh, <laughs> please welcome. Oh, man, I've never said your last name out loud. So here we go. Audrey Schiffhauer. You've never in your life said my last name out loud. I've I spelled guess, it so many times. I guess people talk about me a lot um, when I'm not around, but I'm one of the only Audreys that people know. So my last Audrey Schiffauer. Yes. Power. Power. There was a real estate broker that is a client of mine at my job. And apparently he called into support and said, yeah, I've been working with Audrey Audrey. Schiffauer, Audrey Schiffhauser, Audrey Schiff, Audrey shit something. And it was like, stop guessing that <laughs> and stop saying shit like why would it be oh. that <laughs> shit oh, power. hurt yourself <laughs> i was like why are you guessing this so many times stop <laughs> what a bad guesser um <laughs> beautiful uh you guys we're here to talk about what if so brad audrey what's going on with what if how did we take it in what do we like this what what is it was it good for you the cartoons oh I I, overall i, I liked it I loved it. I, I watched yeah. it the way any good series should be watched, which is I watched the first two episodes when they first came out, and then I watched the rest of them a year later. <laughs> <laughs> Speak on that. I love that. Um, yeah, I liked it too. Man, what a... I loved how like, oh, we're going to do an animated show. Well, let's make it super depressing uh, <laughs> so yeah. they know that we're serious. I love that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there we go. Mm, yes. Um. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, Brad, talk to me. What was your favorite um, of these episodes? Which one spoke to you the most? Well, Audrey and I talked about this like before the podcast. Um, we love the Doctor Strange episode. Um, I, a little bit. I mean, I also love the T'Challa Star-Lord episode oh, for different yeah. reasons. Because oh. mm-hmm. uh, the whole time I was like, oh, oh no, like like tearing up. Because this was uh, Chadwick Boseman's final performance i'm um, definitely final performance as black panther but i think final performance ever yeah. was in what if which is crazy yeah and i think something that i didn't realize that they do for like animated series for adults is actually get all the same voice actors because you're used to like you see a movie in the theater and then there's like some weird like aladdin saturday morning cartoon and it's not any of the actual voice actors and it's very obvious and i remember like last year being like man, these voice actors, they got people that sound a lot like the Marvel characters. And then people would be like, it is all of those people. And I was like, yeah. you're telling me Mark Ruffalo came in and recorded for this animated yeah. series? They're like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. When I looked up the IMDb, I was like, Tom Hiddleston? And, and like, uh, just everyone was in it, essentially, except for like, I think like Scarlett Johansson didn't come back. Like the lame people that you know aren't going to want to do Right, a cartoon. What was uh, Robert Downey Jr. Jr. Ultra, obviously. Yeah. Did Robert? De- Man, that sounded a lot like him. Then I, I thought that was Robert Downey Jr. N- yeah, I don't. I don't I'm think sure that was not, him. But I, it, they did a good match. 
Yeah, I I think it helped that they had to match so few actual actors so they could like really get people that sound like I think it was Lake Bell who did Black Widow and she sounded a lot yeah, like Scarlett Joe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and with animated series, it's so much easier for someone to have a voice effect where it's like maybe you don't sound like her when you're actually speaking, but if you're a good trained voice actor, then you can just make yourself sound think of all the thousands of people who could make themselves sound like scarlett johansson if they practiced you know <laughs> do, do your best scarlett johansson audrey mm-hmm, no, please no. <laughs> i can't i i i don't know if i can um F- fine i'll try um, okay, um, I, um <laughs> I i love working with woody allen and i would do it over and over again for the rest of my life okay i'll <laughs> do mine now i think i can play any race <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, and and I'll do mine. Asian, Mexican. Ha- I'll do mine. Yeah, I'm happy with Colin Jost. <laughs> <laughs> I love to do Super Bowl commercials with my fiance. <laughs> His penis is the normal size. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I loved their Super Bowl commercial, I'm not going to lie. The little teaser one where she's like the really like weird old man character in the play and he's like, mm. "What night is that?" and <laughs> doesn't want to go. <laughs> I didn't think that was funny. Yeah, I really I talked through that whole commercial because I was just mad that they're a couple. That's fair, and that's what the Super Bowl is for. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, my well, it's like an improv couple, couple right? You know, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it shouldn't be. She's not. I'll say it on this podcast. I don't think Scarlett Johansson is funny. If she had done What If, it would have done a lot for my opinion of her. She yeah, didn't do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that was my favorite episode too, the Doctor Strange one. So. Mm-hmm. so deeply sad but it's also for adults like it's not mm-hmm. a kid it's not i have been scolded on saying cartoon and people have said it's an animated series and i'm like who who, who are these people <laughs> i don't know it's a now cartoon I'm like, now I'm it's, a cartoon. It's, a cartoon. it's a graphic novel yeah. Not a yeah. comic book audrey <laughs> a comic book who am i archie no <laughs> i'm so apprehensive of this show uh i'm revealing my issues with the show just because like i like it but i want mm-hmm. it to stay here i don't want marvel to do a marvel and like incorporate yeah. like the watcher you know oh my gosh what is his actor name jeffrey jeffrey wright i want to say oh yeah jeffrey wright is the watcher yeah jeffrey wright is the watcher yeah i don't want to see him fully realized in a, like a live action thing like if they want to just keep this in an animated space where it's like oh what if uh Iron Fist was good. Um, you know, that's cool. Like, I'll watch that. But uh, I don't need to see, what did they call themselves in the last episode? The Guardians of the Multiverse? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keep them animated. I mean, it was really, really interesting timing watching this and not to jump ahead, but also seeing the Doctor Strange movie because I yeah. was like, so much crossover. And I've <laughs> heard this before too, which is, I'm sure you guys heard this too, where it's like Marvel is so genius for opening up the idea of the multiverse because it allows us to just see characters over and over again until to infinity, you know, like, like when you can never really kill any character, like they might always come back and it's just endless movies, endless TV shows. I'm like, I'm here. Yeah. It's really smart of them. (laughs) If we buy any property, we'll just like throw them in. I mean, shit, Frazier could come out of Frazier could have been on the Illuminati and I would have just been like, why not? (laughs) So (laughs) Hello, I'm Dr. I'm Dr. Craig. Oh, yes, bring fucking beast. God. Hello, I'm uh, Hank McCoy and I'm on the Illuminati. Um <laughs> That's my Fraser Gray voice. Um why don't we do this? Let's go. Let's just give like cursory hot takes on these episodes because I think there's okay. only eight. Uh so we start with our nine nine. Okay. Silly me. Uh well, we start with Captain Carter. You know where I first saw Captain Carter was, I think, way, way, way back in like 2015 or 16 or something. Mm -hmm. There was a horrible Candy Crush knockoff that I was addicted to um, for like, I don't know, two years. It It was called Marvel Puzzle Quest. (laughs) And Mm. in this game, there was Captain Carter was a character in Marvel Puzzle Quest. And she wasn't in anything else. She didn't have a comic book. She didn't have anything else. It was just a fun little random thing. And then um, they, Marvel started picking up on her and using her in different stuff. But I think her origin is in that stupid Candy Crush game. 
And not it's a like, comic book from like 30 years. No. <laughs> Actually, I just read the new, they just came out with the first Captain Carter comic book like oh. a, a week ago. And I read it. How was it? Not very good. Mm. That's the stuff I'm unfamiliar with, like ancillary characters and stuff like that. You know, I'm kind of like, mm. oh, why is this happening in the comic book? And someone will be like, well, actually, because, you know, 20 years ago, this like this basically already happened. And now they're just making it into a TV show. So I honestly assume that everything that's happening in this movie is like in some way already happened in comic book form. I, and I don't think that's actually true, but especially watching Doctor Strange, I was so mm. sad. To, I mean, it's not like I can say everything, right? It's not like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, when, when this comes out, I was gonna the say, world will know. I'm so sad that Wanda is gone. I'm so, so Oh, sad. that was it devastating. Was, it was so tough, especially because, but oh, yes. She died the same way the Joker dies every week in back, Batman. Like, just a bunch of rocks fall on her. And it's like, yeah, what? that's true. There was that little red burst, though, when they were mm-hmm. falling that made me, I just, this is not what you asked, Damon, I'm sorry. But she just had, like, such a good redemption arc. And I think a main message of WandaVision was anyone would do this if they were given these powers. Mm -hmm. And like her friend is like, I would absolutely bring my mother back in two seconds. If you know, and, and like the message is like, yeah, this is really fucked up what she did, but we would all do this. Like, and so it felt like she had this redemption arc. And then I know it also ends with her getting the dark hold, but I just was like, damn, we're killing this person. Like, I'm so sad. I also just love her so much. I was, I was, She's one of the only characters that has like, I mean, she had the best TV show of any of the Marvel characters Mm -hmm. and like they had built this character up to be so interesting and fun now. And then to just do a movie and then, um, I mean, she got to do a lot in the movie, but to just kill her off at the end, I was like, well, now we're left with fucking Dr. Strange. (laughs) That's yeah. who we're focusing on. <laughs> That's our we'll, hero. Fuck I think that. we'll see. I think we'll see Wanda again in some other universe. Like I think Elizabeth Olsen will be in more of these movies, but that's, that's like our Wanda. That's the six one six Wanda, you know? So that was a bummer. Yes. Also love six one six. Got a shout out. I didn't understand it until <laughs> <laughs> I watched Dr. Strange. <laughs> Honestly, when they said six one six in the Dr. Strange movie, I was like, finally, people are going to understand my podcast title. Yeah, so <laughs> finally, wait, this so makes that's sense. That's what I mean is where did like, where, what do you know that from? That is something right, that's been okay. in the comics for okay. years. Uh, that this mm-hmm. is earth six one six or like the, the main Marvel universe that we're looking at. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, I fully think, what is going to come back uh, my this is already recorded on our dr strange multiverse of madness episode but i'm going to say it again because i believe wholeheartedly that kang the conqueror is going to be you know the next thanos and that's going to be a big thing and they're going to try to fight him but it won't work and they're going to like say you know we need someone more powerful who's more powerful wanda they're going to dig her up and maybe she'll be there maybe she won't but they're going to i feel like there's going to be some like resurrection scene of like we need a big gun <laughs> so let's get wanda mm-hmm. yeah I mean, they talked about the incursions that, that, yeah, Mm. like that seems like what the next big threat is like, okay, they've done the threat of the whole universe is going to be destroyed. Well, now obviously the whole multiverse will be destroyed. Like, and there was a comic book series called uh, Secret Wars (laughs) where they destroyed the whole universe and Dr. Doom ran a little planet that was all the conglomerate of all the multiverses into one little planet and all the characters. Dr. Doom. On there. Yeah, Dr. Doom. But it could be Kang. They could just sub in whatever the big bad they want to be. Ooh. Mm. All right. Steering us back into the what if. We're already saying what ifs, but the show what if. Um, mm. Adrian Carter, I just loved that You know, Steve was a little dweeb uh, who got his own little clunky Iron Man suit. Uh <laughs> We've got, we've got, uh, we talked a little bit about this T'Challa star Lord. Um, I love that they were kissing and she was like huge and he was so small. <laughs> she wait, would have been like, if they'd had their, like, you know, their dance, oh. mm-hmm. he would have been like, he would have been so small. Yeah. <laughs> I think they just dance alone. I think that's their thing. Steven. Uh, oh, Peggy. I was like T'Challa. I, was like, I know. <laughs> Yes. We haven't left yet, <laughs> but uh, 
the T'Challa Star Lord one, with the exception of like you know see or hearing Chadwick Boseman one more time, this was a fine story. I. Oh, I don't know. so fun! Come on! Oh no, this one had so my fun. my this had yeah. my main grown moment of the whole series with Thanos. And I was, you know, when they were, and it was like, hey, buddy. And I was like, oh, come on. Like, that would be like, if that would be like in an alternate universe and a bunch of people are hanging out and Hitler's there and he's like, oh, I almost did something bad. And it's like, it's, he's too evil to, for me to like, just be a normal dude. Like, I I was like, I I, I think out loud, I was like, oh my God, give me a break. (laughs) Well, I, to me, that was one of those, like everyone that, T'Challa meets, he has such a positive effect mm-hmm. on that even Thanos, he's like just convinced him, like the fact that he can um defeat bad guys just by like explaining why being nice is a good thing. Is, yeah. I don't know. I felt I, I thought it was really nice. If anyone could do that, it would be T'Challa. I didn't mind it with Thanos. I did it, mine was a uh, Yandu, the blue guy. Um, mm-hmm. just because what's that actor's name? Michael, Michael Rooker, Rooker. I, I find him to be a horrible human being based, really? on, based only on the characters he's played. He's, I've never seen him play a character where I'm like, Oh, I love this guy. Well, uh, give him a break. I mean, the guy looks like a cartoon white supremacist. I know, but that doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't help how I feel. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so give him like, a break. He lo- he only looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks like one, and he plays them mostly yeah. uh, exclusively The Walking Dead. Um, so whenever I see him, I'm just like, I think, what was his name? Merle? Merle Dixon on The Walking mm-hmm. Dead. I'm always like, this piece of shit. I'm like, T'Challa would never be his friend. He would never mm-hmm. be his mentor. Yeah, and I also didn't love how they, I mean, look, we're creating this big giant story in like a 35 minute episode so i get it but the thing where it was like oh i actually could have brought you back when you were a child but i lied to you and in about five minutes to child's like i get it and like the the <laughs> line where he was like you weren't like keeping me from home you were showing me the world and i was like i would be unbelievably hurt <laughs> and upset and i'd be like what is wrong with you he just seems to me that was kind of like I was like, I don't know if we needed this because we had Strange the whole double cross, credulity. Double cross credulity. thing, yeah, and all yeah. the cool, like all the cool little Easter eggs of oh, he has Captain America's shield and he has her antler helmet and all that stuff. <laughs> like, I just don't think we needed that, and he got over it way too fast. To yeah. Me. Um, speaking of uh, fast, fast moves. This next episode, um, where the Avengers get killed one after the other, um, by Hank Pym. Who knew? This episode was kind of dark and bleak and kind of miserable. Yeah. Like, and it was only episode three. Yeah. I do like when, when superhero shows and movies sometimes take a turn of like, and everybody lost. Cause that's like actually what happens sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're this big of a Marvel fan that you're watching, what if I understand why they experimented with like, these people are going to, going to go for a superhero thing that actually ends poorly as opposed to like mm-hmm. all everybody going to see Spider-Man and it's like, and then Spider-Man actually dies. And like yeah. people would be like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I, mean, one dark. I guess. Yeah. This one was dark. And then the next one is like evil Dr. Strange. I just wanted, and then the one for that this is the zombie one. <laughs> it's just like, I wish they had like done every other, like it's like dark yeah. one. And then like a silly, and I needed more party well, Thor the, or yeah, Happy T'Challa well, Star Lord. Party Thor was such a wild swing in the other direction that it was like, what the fuck kind of show is this? <laughs> I thought I came here to cry. I don't know what I came like. It, it was just too many in the, that like that were kind of miserable or, yeah. or not miserable, but like bleak. Bleak really the word, bleak. yeah. Yes, and like one person, the Doctor Strange one, which is our favorite, is like mm-hmm. one one decision and one person like can literally ruin the whole world. And now our mm-hmm. Earth is just this little sphere. I mean, I think that's yeah. why I liked it so much because it was like seeing over and over all the different ways that Christine dies. Like that sounds mm-hmm. messed up, but it just is so interesting where it's like, you can go back as many times as you want, but like, she'll have a heart attack or she'll, if you, even if you don't pick yeah. her up or even if you don't. And I think it, it, that one made me think the most, I think, which is probably why it's my favorite. I thought it was just such a good yeah. metaphor for grief 
you know, the, like the way that when you lose someone or something goes wrong in your life, the way you sort of relitigate it over and over and over in your mind. Mm -hmm. And there's just no way to change the outcome because it's happened. Um, yeah. And, it was very yeah and, and, you know, since we're being open about Dr. Strange's multiverse of madness, this one I think was so good to watch and in preparation for that. Cause it, I mean, this is what Wanda did. She was like, how mm -hmm. can I change my life? And it led her down a villainous path. And I, I mean, this, oh God, this is why I love Marvel just because it's very, it, it, everyone's so human. Like, even though they have, I think it was like you were, you, I think Audrey, you were saying like, if, even though they have this power, it still can corrupt them because they're just, they're just human beings who lucked out on the evolutionary chain, but they still have wants and hopes that are so basic. Like they're not like DC, you know, gods amongst us. Um, they're just, they're just people. There's people who can fly. Yeah. And I, to me, I, I was thinking like, it would almost be a relief to me to find out that something was an absolute point because then you can realize that's no longer your fault that she was yeah. going to die that night, no matter what. And there's nothing you could have done as opposed to continuing to live with the guilt of like, I killed Christine. Like I would have been like, Oh, that almost would be a relief to be like as sad as this is. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. That's so yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, like as sad as this was, it's not my fault. Like even when he doesn't pick her up, there's like a robbery. And it's like he's mm -hmm. implicated in some like passive way every time, obviously. But I would be like, oh, I couldn't have done anything. And I didn't kill her because I was like texting and driving. She was going to die that night no matter what. Like, yeah, <laughs> like literally it's either her or me, her or also, these hands. It's also directly tied to him becoming Doctor Strange. So mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's 100% true because he's saying, I don't care if I become Doctor Strange. I just want Christine back, you know? Yeah. Right. I also love the kind of metaphor of like, he literally destroys himself, you know, yeah. with his depression. He absorbs <laughs> another yeah. person. He um, absorbs demons and then destroys himself. Like, I felt like that episode was operating on a, on a little bit of a higher level was think like, it seemed mm -hmm. like they were thinking a little harder about the story they were trying to tell. And then yeah. the next one's just like zombies, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, but that was such a good point about an absolute point. And what is an absolute point that we cannot change is that we got to take a break, but we're going to be back to talk more about what if I'm really good at transitions. Um, so please stick around. Hopefully we have messages and we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Sam Post, owner of Phenomwell CBD Store and PhenomwellCBD.com. That's like phenomenal, PhenomwellCBD.com. Tune in where we talk with experts about how the amazing hemp plant can make a difference for people's health and well-being from the Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. Hey everyone, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in season two for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. And we're back. <laughs> we're still talking about what if and what could have been. Um, I think we're on in the your writing career. No, <laughs> no, don't talk about that. It is, all, it is all I have, but don't talk about that. Okay. Um, what if zombies? What if zombies? The zombie episode. I feel like this was the one I was most excited for because I knew they were going to do it. I had not read. Brad, did you read the comic? Run I did. This? I read the comic books. The comic mm -hmm. book is very fun. Mm -hmm. I think it's like maybe it's the century goes to some other planet and comes back and he's infected with a zombie virus and gets everybody infected. And mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a whole crazy thing. Yeah. It's a great comic. That first one is so good. Yeah. 
Is it, is it, was it like a series or was it just a one-off? They did the one-off and then they came back and did another one. And then they did like, I don't even know, like two or three more of these. Like they were so successful and people liked them so much. Yeah. Um, Andre, if you're done sneezing, uh, what? Thank you. <laughs> right. I'm so sorry. Bless you. God bless you. That's what I meant to say. I've never um, done sneezing because I have a cat and I'm allergic to cats. So I'm sneezing for the rest of my life. Damn. Um, girl. <laughs> girl, why? Uh, I like this episode. I love the little thing. Okay. First of all, we get a Baba Yaga reference, mm. which I love because of John Wick. And I was like, love any Baba Yaga reference that we get um, <laughs> because I'm, a, I'm in love with John Wick. Also but, so um, funny. They put that of all the characters to put in this episode. They're like, okay, who's, who's going to be chased by zombies? Obviously like Spider-Man and mm-hmm. Sharon Carter and then Kurt from Ant-Man. Yeah. Okay. I have not fully seen, I've seen like, I saw Ant-Man and I have not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp. So that guy, I was like, I don't know who this is. I'm probably supposed to know who it is. It's some Russian dude. Remind me who he is. Who is this? He's like one of Ant-Man's friends who's like in the movie. He's like, oh, but Baba Yaga is going to get us, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Oh, he's with like Michael Pena and like. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He, he's yeah. he's the co- comic relief. But then the, everyone in that movie is comic relief. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except for poor whatever her name evangeline Evangeline lily as someone who's watched every episode of lost i'm going to tell you evangeline lily is never the comic relief you don't you don't don't cast her for her comic timing love that canadian actress but (laughs) i not fun i this is part of the reason i i love like a cartoon series because they just are like it's hank pym who goes to get his wife right in the Mm -hmm. quantum realm and it's like, and she got a zombie virus and we're all like, sure. Okay. Like they don't need to like elaborate on it any further than yeah. like Walter Rome has zombie viruses and now his wife's a zombie. And we're like, okay, mm-hmm. sure. Like no one is like, actually that's not, you know, cause it's like, I just love when it's all made up. And mm-hmm. I, I do like when it's like sometimes trying to explain things is a detriment because then it's way easier to poke holes and stuff that is written down. So for them to just be like the beginning of that was so fast. And it was like, and actually she's a zombie now. And I was like, okay, yep. Okay. I'm on board. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Hank Pym was like the secret weapon of this. Uh, what if series? Cause they used to, cause he was the one killing the Avengers yeah. earlier. Um, and now and he, if, if Hank, I'm sorry, Damon, if Hank Pym was a secret weapon, then T'Challa is like the star of it. He's in like five of the episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Was- if you have Chadwick Boseman <laughs> as a voice actor though, I'd, I'd plug him into everything. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. He's not in too much, but I was just like, damn, this guy's getting a lot of cartoon screen time. Yeah. Ugh, what we all long for um, as actors. I, I really like the zombie one. I think, I think it was successful. I do. Mm-hmm. I mean, it has no ending, which I've heard is that how the comic books, like it just kind of keeps going. The apocalypse. Yeah. I mean, I think that the comic books, I think they have an ending. It's been so long since I read them, but like then for whatever reason they keep going. I don't quite understand it. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to keep going through this. What if series? Uh, Cause now, <laughs> now it's time good, for, Damon. Thank you. Honestly, I am open to feedback. Uh, please. Uh, next we have, what if Killmonger rescued Tony Stark? This one, I, did we need it? I was, I don't right. know. This one is probably my least favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speak on that. Why Audrey? What okay. Work for you? It, it's too much. It's too much for, again, a 35 minute series. We have, it's like, mm-hmm. what if Killmonger? And then it's like, and then he kills Tony and then he and then he yeah. starts a war with to start a war with um, Wakanda and then he double crosses Wakanda and then he double crosses the army and then he becomes the Black Panther and then he double cro- and it's like oh my it's like okay like just thing <laughs> like, after thing after thing after thing yeah, and it was also so like fast and yeah you we didn't see another side of Killmonger we didn't like and I kept thinking like um also I was a little bit like I'm on Killmonger's side <laughs> mm. you know tony never had redemption in this version right, so he's yeah. just building drones so killmonger kills this dude then he takes over wakanda so that i think he can declare war on america yes i was yes. like good for you baby that was always his <laughs> i don't know 
Am I supposed to be mad at him? Oh, he even says something. There's even a, a bunch of lines that I was like, th- thematically, I was like, what, are, what the fuck are you talking about? Where um, I think Colonel Rhodes says, Rhodey, he's like, yeah. mm-hmm. you have to be in the system to change the system. I was like, are we supposed to root for you, buddy? Like, die. And I then, agree with that. Come yeah. on, was like, fuck that, and then stabbed him, which like was so sad that he died. But yeah, that's like people being like, I'm gonna become a police officer to change things from the inside. And it's like that does not work. <laughs> no, I was like, Killmonger's doing making a lot more, you know, direct action. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and it it was just so random to me to like because this really reformats the first Iron Man movie, which for the MCU was the thing that launched everything. And so it's just strange to me, like the thing that's going to derail the Iron Man timeline is Killmonger, who like we didn't meet until like years into it. Like I was, you know, if you're going to change Iron Man's origin story, I was like, well, who was like already operating around that time? You know, like maybe, I don't know, maybe the Red Skull comes back or something or like something a little bit more of like the phase one era of the MCU. It just was like, I don't know. They got Michael B. Jordan. I'm like, good, great. Get if you got Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, I'm not going to say no to that. I guess it, I, I would have rather like because I I always like this kind of exercise. Like, what if the villain won? Like, what if he? Mm-hmm. What if Michael B. Jordan just defeated T'Challa in Black Panther? Like, mm-hmm. and launch this attack like what would the world look like then yeah or like what if killmonger became iron man and he was like bad Mm -hmm. but pretending to be good and just stop it there just say he kills tony stark and then he gets all of his iron man shit and then he like somehow becomes iron man you know or something like that it just was a lot of double crossing it was like it's not it wasn't like it was hard (laughs) to follow but i was like Okay, so again, he this was actually a ruse for this. I was kind of like, all right. (laughs) Actually, I'm going to do this. But actually, it's this. We're all talking about what we would have done differently in this show. I would have done... I would have done a Dark Avengers episode. I would have done like an episode where like, what if the villains became the Avengers and, and, and then they were like good or were they evil or like, what did they do? Um... That would have been fun. Like, what oh, if yeah. the Red Skull was Captain America and, you know what I mean? Oh, I just, I, I just got full. I don't know. It felt, that, <laughs> that, that, that fills me up so much. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to, speaking of full, uh, oh boy, Party Thor. Can we skip Party Thor? Can we just skip this one? Let's Maybe. talk about it for a minute because the writers of the show, they're trying to match the tone of the movies and they're putting in all these quips. Yes. And sometimes the quips get fucking out of control where it's like a situation where like Jeremy Renner has lost his whole family in a nuclear war and he's being attacked by robots in the lifeless wasteland of the planet. And he goes, come on, guys, give me a break. Oof, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> and I'm like, your daughter's dead. Your wife's dead. Everyone you know is dead. But you're having fun. <laughs> Have a little party at the end of the world. Uh, and did you find that in, wait, in Party Thor or in the one where Ultron? Went? It was a lot. I don't know. Party Thor. I don't know. The comedy just didn't really hit for me. A it lot, was a I lot. And e- even with Scott Lang's head, I was like, I know this is. Oh, that was too head. much. I was like, stop. I was like, you would be depressed you would be saying just kill me i just yeah. want it you know <laughs> if you were ahead that would have been he's, funny he's quipping he's like you know yeah. he's escape and he's like all right and i'm like you would <laughs> you would be a shell of a person this is the episode where i was thinking about it the most because it was the one of the bleaker episodes but the um the one where everyone is dead except jeremy renner and black widow mm-hmm. and the what if ultron one and they're walking through the big warehouse full of kgb files and there's a line that's like you ever seen raiders of the lost ark you know stuff like that just these jokes that i'm just like uh not everything like it was it felt like a defense mechanism of the writer of like gotta throw in some jokes so that like you know we create that signature marvel banter that everybody loves and I think I'm sure you talked about this on your last episode, Dan, but I think a great 
balance in Doctor Str- is in the scene in Doctor Strange where the Illuminati all get murdered and we get kept Cap- amongst that we just get Captain Carter saying I could do this all day and like yeah. my theater oh, no. my theater like cheered because but well, I loved it because to me it's a <laughs> it's a fucked up scene mm-hmm. and no one else really <laughs> says anything quippy or funny at all and then we just get that one in that like yeah. six yeah. minute scene and I'm and the, everyone loved it and so I was mm-hmm. like okay that's how you do it you know like not everyone is in a horrible zombie apocalypse and still doing bits, you know, which by the way, that scene, holy shit to put that scene in a movie that kids are going to see kids Kids are going to see see. this movie. There's so many things about that scene that I was like, how did this pass through so many gatekeepers? The guy blowing himself up. Yeah. (laughs) That was so great. You think that was a, 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 a shot at Ike Perlmutter for doing uh, inhumans. Was that a shot at, (laughs) And in humans, like talks and is it blows up his own head. <laughs> I think I mean I said this on the pod, but yeah, very surprised the Inhumans from the terrible television series Inhumans made it to the big screen. Um, we're gonna keep on going down. <laughs> I I feel like we you know I didn't want to talk about Thor, and you know what we didn't. Uh, so oh wait, I'm sorry. One thing to say about Party yes, Thor. Any Thor there's thoughts. no way this guy who comes to planets and just gets fucked up and invites all of his friends doesn't have sex with like 30 women in a night. There's no way he meets. Yeah. Jane. And also, there's no way Jane is like you seem like a giant asshole, and I'm in love with you. Like he's so rude mm-hmm. to her, and he's, yeah. he makes her so like, and she falls for it. And then also, I'm like, you're not going to come to a giant orgy drug Coachella party and fall in love with one woman and not, I'm like, there's no way. I'm like, this guy is a, this, that's a huge aspect of a party dude. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this is not I really mean, cool. the reality of the tone of this episode was so silly. And she marries a duck. She marries the uh, cat. Cat Denning marries the, the duck. I just Google, Howard the duck? I just Google duck Marvel. Cause I like forgot. <laughs> oh, treat <laughs> yourself to the, the I wonderful think, world of Howard the Duck. <laughs> I, I, I will say, I, I watched the assembled behind the scenes making of the What If series. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that they said about this that I did think was interesting, this was their way of like, they were like, well, we don't want to just do, oh, he's bad and he's trying to take over the world. But like, what if he just didn't care? And that's how we get to eat. Like, this is this is their villain. Like, Thor is a villain. That's what they were trying to go for in a different no. way. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> As an only child, um, I really resent the fact that they were like, Thor's an only child. So you know what that means? He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> I was yeah. like, no. <laughs> yeah. What a weird, peculiar choice. Like to yeah. say that, well, without, and they tried to explain it, like without Loki keeping things lively. I was like, what the fuck do you mean by that? Yeah. With, without him. And what did that even change? But also, what did that even change? If you saw, you, we all saw the first Thor movie. Mm-hmm. When he comes to the planet, he basically is party Thor. Mm-hmm. But then he gets sent away where he meets Natalie Portman and then is better because love. I buy it. <sighs> he learns responsibility because Natalie Portman, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. We'll find we'll, Love and Thunder is coming. Weird episode. Um, we can. Mom's we, coming back. We gotta put the whole planet back. It's and also, a, he it's, makes the, a huge announcement. He goes, "Hey, my mom's coming," and they all go. <gasps> <laughs> That's so funny. It is funny. It is fun, but it is like because it came. If it was just not, if there were a bunch more episodes like that, it wouldn't stick out so much to me. But yeah. I was like, but they're not. They're all so sad. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're so sad, and the zombies one is like the most fun. So it's mm-hmm. still all very sad, but it's like, oh, fun zombies! Like that's right. the amount of fun I wanted. Not, I didn't. I did not need the part. The Killmonger episode was my least favorite of the good episodes, and then Party mm-hmm. Four is just this weird tacked-on episode where I'm like, okay, I guess you had to have one that wasn't like horrendously sad, right? Uh, well, let's combine these last two. Uh, this is the one where Ultron wins everything. Uh, Ultron wins. Like this is what I wanted from the Killmonger episode, mm-hmm. and. I just love that. And then the other one where like the watcher gets the guardians of the multiverse together. I love that Ultron got so powerful. He just turned around. It's like, hold on. Someone's fucking narrating this. <laughs> Let me. Yes. Yeah, that was cool. Like, that was I did cool like moment. that. Um, I think, yeah, we talked about, I mean, this is mostly black widow and Hawkeye. 
you know, hey, good for them. I, I love how comics are always like, yeah, the person without the powers is going to survive. I'm like, man, what an inspirational thought that I know would never happen if this was really ha- like, no. Well, they happened to be on an airplane at the time that the nuclear bombs all went <laughs> off. So because they were on an airplane, they couldn't die. No one else was uh, on an airplane. Mm. So everyone else died, but they were on an airplane. And an airplane, as we all know, nuclear bombs don't affect airplanes because you're up high in the air and no one else is. There's only one airplane at a time. So, so, you know, I don't, you know, if you think about it really hard, it makes, uh, it makes more sense. And you know what? I did not think about it very hard. That was my mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, So we get some duo action there. Um, La, 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 la. Anything to say from this episode? We get some Uh, Zola action. I have a, I have a newbie question or not newbie but you guys will know this why does hawkeye have a fake arm in this universe or episode was it just a robot took his arm off and he's and i think they were like mapping him onto winter soldier like he's this universe's version of winter soldier maybe oh okay yeah because i didn't like notice it at first and all of a sudden he gets his arm shot off and i was like oh my god (laughs) and then like like, it wasn't bleeding or anything i was like holy shit and then you know she goes need a hand and i was like okay this is a metal arm i guess yeah Yeah. i also loved um i i do love arnim zola I love that actor who plays him. I think his name is Toby Stevens, maybe Toby yes. something. It is Toby something. Toby he's Jones. so good. Toby Jones. Yeah, he's so good. Um, and they Wait, didn't. Sorry, I, is that Hydra computer guy? Yeah, he's Hydra okay. computer guy. I, I wish they'd done more with him. He's so I like great. Too. He's really I, I, good. I think Hydra computer guy is a better superhero name for him. Yeah. A super villain name. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Hydra's computer villain guy. <laughs> I love uh, and I love, yeah, I, I, I like that there are still stakes for him because of it's like, I've uploaded my conscience to every computer in the world or, you know, whatever he did. And then it's like, but now there's only one left. So you actually like, even though you made this way that you could never die, you actually could, unless you, that's the time that there's stakes for that character. So I thought that was cool. All right. We head into the last one. What if the watcher broke his oath? Uh, the Watcher has come up against Ultron and he's recruited. I, I like this as the last episode. He's recruited like some of the fan favorites you've seen throughout this season. And they all come together. Dare my improv friends, like a herald with a callback. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it all comes back. I was literally actually thinking before we did this episode, like I should bring up how the season works exactly the same as a herald. <laughs> Party Thor is the <laughs> second game. Yeah. <laughs> One hundred percent. He's the second game. Yeah. Hardy Thor is that person in the cast who was not paying attention for the whole show and is like, I'm going to go in a different direction. Show yeah. Like Fifteen yeah. minutes late to the show, just hop in, mm-hmm. and it kills. Yeah. He's the Jeff Dow of the team. You yes. know. He's the Tyler Davis running over from main stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, don't compare Tyler to, to no, Jeff I mean, Dow. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah not, he doesn't true. know what happened. Sorry, Tyler. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler. But also, Tyler, thank you for listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he might listen. He loves Marvel. <laughs> I don't know why that's my dream, to have Tyler Davis in the one part uh, Marvel <laughs> podcast uh, I did. But um, yes, yeah, so we get uh, we get all these callbacks. We get Gamora for some reason. Um, oh yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Of- I, I felt like I'd missed an episode or something. Yeah, Same. I don't mind the I don't mind the B list pick. I don't like that they picked Killmonger because, like you said, Brad, we don't see him evolve or do anything differently. I, I don't think like the Watcher. I don't think the Watcher would have been like, yes, this guy, <laughs> like this man who constantly not, not to backseat people. drive not, not, or backseat write the show, but. You know, the thing about Killmonger that I think is so interesting is when you watch Black Panther, you're rooting, at least I, I don't know, I was rooting for Black, uh, Killmonger uh, mm. to uh, a, an extent until he like started doing a bunch of bad things. But his ideology, I was kind of like, yes. well, I'm kind of on his side, even though yeah. it's like, you know, he goes too far with like murdering a bunch of innocent people. Um, they always do. The vi- villains always do that. They can't manage to yeah. do it without killing people. <laughs> And That's their one fault. They rush it so much with Carly and Falcon and the Winter Soldier that mm-hmm. Killmonger is a much better example of a villain that you really want to root for for pretty much most of the movie. But like, yeah, if I'd been writing What If, I'd be like, what if he 
wanted to do all those things and he found a way to not kill a bunch of people or I don't know. We'd love him. Could be a thing. Yeah. We, uh, uh, j'adore. Um, so talk to me about the guardians of the multiverse. Um, who do we got? We got Captain Carter, um, Black Widow. I'm trying to look at this fucking thing. Uh, yeah. Killmonger, Party Thor, Evil Doctor Strange. A lot of evil people on this team. Uh, mm-hmm. Did this work? Did this work for you? Was this like, oh, this is a good team up? I want to see. I liked it. Yeah, yeah. good, good. Um, like spectrum of characters. Yeah, and they all had their own little. Um, I appreciated that each character was given a little moment to do something or to. Mm-hmm. You know, be cool. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to show their coolness. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it. I think this was a good resolution, especially for like you get eight standalone episodes, and then the ninth one is like, "Hey, thank you for watching all of this. Here is where it all comes together." Yeah, I actually. Uh, oh, sorry, Damon. Please. I I really liked. I did not expect it to be anything with a cohesive plot at all, and. Um, I thought that that was cool. It was a little confusing the way they introduced it because after, at the end of the party Thor episode with, to me, I was like, I guess vision's evil in this universe. Like I kind of didn't right. see it yet as like something that had cohesion. So I was like, wait, did I miss something? But then very quickly they just tie it all in. But I thought that mm-hmm. that was cool. Yeah. And it is like a thank you for watching. And now we're going to do all the highlights of all of the episodes. And as a thank you all for listening the highlight of this podcast and every podcast is the infamous fuck, Mary kill uh, that we do at the end of every podcast that we do fuck, Mary kill. Once again, Michael producer, Michael, please uh, switch. This should not be a clean podcast because we do a fuck, Mary kill in every episode. Children should not listen unless they don't want to be children anymore. Um, This is where we pick three. (laughs) That's a fine thing to say. We pick three characters and we decide which one we're going to fuck marry or kill we have decided before the podcast began which three we're going to do uh because this was a very sprawling um (laughs) show i forget did we choose party thor or no i think we did we We did did. yeah i mean i think we all would mercy kill scott lang's head (laughs) yes (laughs) blanket statement across the board so the the three people we're going to be talking about party thor captain carter and of course the star of the show the watcher itself himself Jeffrey Wright's The Watcher. Um, as a favor to my guests to give them time to think about this, I will go first. Ooh, people are not going to be happy with my choices. I'm going to kill The Watcher. Simply Damn too it. big. I don't know. Wh- wh- what do I do with that? Hey, but Damon, I bet he gives great head. <laughs> oh, God. Damon, did you hear what I said? Did Brad, you? Yes. Put your shirt back on. <laughs> he gives. He gives great head. Uh, listeners, Brad's glasses are <laughs> hanging within an inch of their life on the edge of his nose as he says Damon, this. do you know why? Do you know why he goes great head? Do you know why? Because his head's so big! Man, we have got to get that clean rating off this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Killing the Watcher, goodbye to you, Michelle Branch. I'm not a fool. I'm, I'm gonna fuck Party Thor, you know? Annoyed me, but <laughs> what am I, crazy? I'm gonna pass up party thor come on um and then i'm gonna marry i'm in a i'm in a i have a big savior mode today um i'm gonna marry uh actually no wait we're doing captain carter oh then never mind i'm gonna marry captain carter it's gonna be great i thought it was evil's doctor strange but it's captain carter and i'm gonna marry captain carter and we'll have a very um polite marriage Mm -hmm. (laughs) she's i don't know she's from She's from the like 30s or 40s. She definitely has some regressive views that we're not talking about that like just never came up. <laughs> no, 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 no. She's one of the good ones. She's one of those. First wave feminist, sure. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> she's pro- she's a progressive. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Way ahead of her time. Like, she's going to love me. <laughs> babe, great news. We got invited to speak with Boris Johnson. <laughs> love <Yeah>. so much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think as the MCU has proven, uh, racism does not exist unless we need it to for our stories. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad, would you like to go next? Um, yeah, I guess I'll go next. Um, okay, so it's Party Thor, The Watcher, and Captain Cap- Carter, Captain C. Um, I would fuck 
uh, the watcher because I think it would be interesting. And, um, you know, you get to say like, I had sex with a, a multiversal entity. Like, I don't I know. I don't know what its genitals are or mm-hmm. what sex with it would be, but I would imagine since it has access to, you know, trans dimensional shit beyond human comprehension Mm -hmm. that he's doing things to your, your little teeny weeny penis. That is just like unbelievable, you know, Mm -hmm. like, like an orgasm for a trillion years. And then you come back and you're like, you won't believe the night I had. (laughs) (laughs) I never thought of it that way. (laughs) And then, let me think. This is Captain Carter and Party Thor. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, weirdly, I'm going to say kill Captain Carter for the reasons that I said, which is that she's from the 30s and 40s. I don't have time to educate you. I'm not here to teach you. <laughs> so, so instead, I'll kill you. <laughs> and for sure, she'd be a Trump supporter. Let's be real. Wow. If, Wow. I think I well, think she's British. I know, but she would be. I feel it. Mm. And uh, Party Thor, um, I don't think he votes, and uh, oh and that's fine. And uh, he, and if we got married, maybe he'd take me back to Asgard, and that'd be fun. I mean, okay, I think you'll be <laughs> up all night, but you stay up late from our memory as memory as your yeah. roommate. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. And I, I obviously am a, a big party guy. That's what people know about me. Party bread. Love to party. I go out all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't even, bike. I don't read books. Gross. I what don't if like Brad books. was the only child? He'd be so different. What if Brad <laughs> was a party? This is a fun experiment. Uh, I will ask at the, after this, but Audrey, please, what is your fuck? Okay. Time? Also, we all have different answers, which doesn't always happen with three people, but I, I would, know. I would absolutely fuck the watcher because of what Brad said. We would have sex in this Dr. Strange paint dimension. <laughs> <laughs> You're like coming polygons. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be hard to eat, but it's not hard to have sex. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. He's like, the uh, only way to eat is to have sex. Oh my God. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> Yeah, and he would be like intimate, slow. He's got such a great voice, you know. It would be like oh yeah, he'd, like voice lay is good. Down I forgot about the that. Kaleidoscope yeah. house, you know. I, it seems like he just lives in a long, house. Seems like he just lives in like a long hallway, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in, the comic books, in the comic books, he lives on the moon. Okay, perfect. <laughs> the watcher lives on the moon. <laughs> Does he really? Yeah. So on like Earth's was, moon of all the places to live. I was it's just so reading obvious. a comic book where um, they they tried to kill the Watcher and they just blew up the moon. Nice. Did it work? No, no he survived. He's the Watcher. Of course. Those dummies. Yeah, he would be intimate. We would be making love for a trillion years. So that would do that. Party Thor has, you know, Party Thor is a one minute man. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, so that and would I, be very boring. I've probably already had sex with some Party Thor in my own way. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> also, how many STDs do you think Party Thor? Yeah, has? Exactly, like all of them. Space STDs. He has yes. all of them. He has venom on his dick. You know, like he has what are you know he has a symbiote, but only on his dick. Absolutely. So, oh my God, I would kill him. Picture it. This is for kids, him. right? This podcast is for kids. Yeah. Absolutely. It okay. is. It was until today. I would kill Party <laughs> Thor. He, someone. It's not easy. It's not hard to do what he's doing. Someone else just starts inviting every. Um, mm-hmm. Drax can throw parties <laughs> and invite everybody. So, I also love that he was in the series. It's always nice to see him. Um, I would marry Captain <laughs> Carter. You know, I would marry Captain Carter. You give her bell hooks. You give her Brene Brown. She finds herself. I think she can change. Brene Brown. Bell hooks and Brene Brown is all a woman needs to <laughs> see the other side. <laughs> learn about other people. Learn about yourself. <laughs> you know, so mm-hmm. she she'd be fine. Or you know, she's already par- partially of the way there because any woman in the forties, like, there's so much. 
footage of her getting spoken over by men that she probably already is like, I fucking hate these people. And we're like, what if I told you <laughs> that you could live in a world where everybody agrees with that? So yeah, we would have a great life together. We would dance slowly in our house and it, it would be nice. Got to take it slow. Um, that's beautiful. Um, thank you both so much. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, we all killed a different person. Um, real quick, uh, this might go long. I have no concept of time. I'm so sorry, but I just want to, well, we got to talk part. about Morbius, obviously. Like, <laughs> absolutely. I, I haven't said this out loud, but this is an anti-Morbius podcast. I will never, <laughs> never talk about Morbius. What if Morbius was kept in America? <laughs> well, I was, I was going to say for, for us, uh, for the last question I have for you guys, what would be the what if title of your episode? Like, what is the mm. thing? Like, what if I, we said, like, what if Brad was a partier or like, uh, what if I go here? Like for me, it would be like, what if Damon played sports would be, would be <laughs> Because, man, I'll tell you what, my father really wanted me to play sports. Damn. I'm like, mine sorry, be, daddy, I've got hmm. a podcast. Oh, mine would be like, what if Audrey never discovered Christianity? And I honestly think about that mm. all the time because I got sucked into a church by my friend in seventh grade and it like mm-hmm. ruled my life for 10 years. And I think about that a lot. I truly am like, I wonder if I'd be like married to someone random and not doing comedy. That would probably have changed my life a lot. Yeah. So oh, wow. Yeah. And then you, Brad? Um, I mean, I guess, yeah, uh, not discovering Christianity is interesting. I guess what if I could control the minds of everyone on earth and make them do whatever I wanted to, (laughs) you went big. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. In in my personal life, man, let me think here. I mean, controlling the minds, uh, Uh, I mean, that would obviously be mine too, if that's an option. (laughs) I don't know. Um, like what I would change about my life. I feel like, or this, I feel like the stakes can be lower. Yeah. yeah that's what I mean. And it's, yeah. I, I guess I'm looking for like, maybe not like a good, Oh, just, I got it. What if I was like, um, what if I was like really into drugs and alcohol? <laughs> <laughs> What if I was like a serious substance abuser and had like a real problem and people were worried about me? <laughs> that would be the new bleakest episode of yeah. the show. Oh my god. Yeah, exactly. I was gonna say what very in were, line with what if the tone that was of the an show. episode of what if that was what if like, Damon played what if, sports? What if Audrey didn't feel bad about kissing people in high school? What if Brad was a drug addict on the right. <laughs> and not in a fun way? Like yeah. he's, no. He's like, his parents don't hear from him anymore. He's like, his relationships are suffering. He's like, people are really worried about him. It's an episode of Intervention. It would be a different show. Well, like, what if that, can you imagine that episode where like, what if Clint Barton was a heroin addict? (laughs) And he he would be the what? Yes. Uh, Yeah, of course he would be. Well, audience, well, listeners. Uh, this was a dark episode of the pod for a dark episode <laughs> for a, a very dark series. So I feel like it's very apt. I stand behind everything said in this podcast. Come, just come at me. Just, just listen. That's all I care about. Um, this is the podcast. Um, thank you both so much. Um, Brad Pike, if we were trying to find you on the internet or anywhere, where would we look? What's going on? Um, okay. Uh, on the internet, I guess you would type in, you would maybe go to my, Oh man, I guess you'd go to my Instagram, mm-hmm. which I think is Brad53199. I think if you just type in Brad Pike, you'll find me or Devil's Daughter. Just look up Devil's Daughter. Nice, nice. And yeah, Devil's Daughter, you guys, do, do you have a show? Yeah, we have a show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. at the Annoyance Theater in Chicago, Illinois, in America, United States of America. Mm-hmm. rock on great team great people great former roommate audrey <laughs> never live with you but i think you're great too where can people find you thanks damon well we would have been good roommates i think we so would, we would have been what if best. damon and up. audrey had been roommates that's the oh, what if that's my new one mine was too heavy. and they were really into <laughs> drugs and alcohol <laughs> yeah damon and i would have respected each other's damon and i both need quiet alone time and so i think we would have respected that for each other i really do um 
My Instagram is oddpodge seventy one, but I am a I am the watcher on Instagram. I I rarely post, and I just watch reels all day. Um, <laughs> but um, I'm doing a lot of shows at Logan Square Improv on Fridays and Saturdays this summer. We all love Logan Square Improv, so oh. even if I'm not there, come go check them out because they're really fun. But I'll be there a lot. Um, actually, with the bar. So Damon, if you feel like coming in <laughs> for a show, <laughs> uh, you know. I won't, but yeah, we know. L- love the bar. I love the bar. I still have the little bar logo on my phone. Oh, nice. The bar is well, great. Um, thank you, Audrey. Uh, I am Damon Royster, uh, host of Podcast 616. If you would like to follow Podcast 616, we're on Twitter at Podcast 616P3. That P3 stands for Press Play Productions, which is the network that is uh, gracefully letting us do this podcast here. Uh, if you want to follow me personally, I'm Damon Royster on Instagram, uh, Damon Royster 88 on Twitter. Um, producer Michael, uh, I'm going to have you come on mic real quick. Michael, uh, this podcast, what grade would you give this filthy podcast that we just did? Another A plus. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. But uh, I do want to say I'm, I'm really serious with these grades. Do you really mean it? A plus? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like my report cards. Um, everybody, thank you so much for being here. What if is on Disney Plus? I don't need to say that, but if you want to. <laughs> Morbius is streaming on, uh, by this point, Morbius is streaming on. In hell. Uh, everywhere. <laughs> on every service. Uh, thank you all so much for listening. And remember that with great power will come, of course, great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs>